Welcome back to the No BS RPG Maker MV Guide. Today we will be covering the last few tabs in the database. We are in the final stretch, which I'm sure many of you will be happy with. I want to thank you guys for your patience one more time, as I did not expect to split this into a three video series just for the database on its own. But let's face it, my attention span barely lasts beyond 30 minutes, and if it can affect me this way, I'm sure many of you have the same issue. With that said, keep in mind that I do have a Patreon, so if you appreciate the work I'm doing here and the detail I'm going into in covering the RPG Maker software, please consider backing me. You will receive perks such as early access to videos on this channel and free access to select game assets that I have for sale on my itch.io store. With that said, let's finish up the database. Next up is the Common Events tab. Common events are essentially global events that can be called in combat or on the map by either an event, spell, or even an item. These events can also be turned on by a trigger, allowing it to run as an auto-run state or parallel. We will cover the difference between auto-run and parallel in another video, but to give you a basic idea of the difference is auto-run will run an event to completion before you're able to do anything further while Parallel will run in parallel with the game. A good example of a way to use a Parallel Common Event is if you choose you want to set up a weather system or a day and night system. These can run in parallel with the game very well. When you select Auto Run or Parallel, the switch option will be enabled. This means you will need to select a switch that can be used to turn on or off the event. Switches are global so this means you should be mindful to name your switches appropriately and avoid using switches that may be used already with other events, unless you're 100% sure that you want them to be linked. I will cover switches and event creation in a future video, as that is an entire video's worth of information on its own. The System tab is where you will set the primary details for your game. You can set the name of the game, the symbol used for the currency, and your starting party. On top of that, options that affect the game's map and combat are here as well. Under Options, you can tell the game if you want to use the side view battle that is built into the engine with a checkbox. Linked to this is going to be the side view magic skills section, which is where you can set which types of skills will use the casting or chanting animation for your side view character. Back to Options, however, you have the Start Transparent option. What this does is allows you to begin the game via New Game in the title screen, and the characters will not appear on screen until you use an event command to make your characters appear. Show Player Followers is an option that you can use if you want to display your entire party on the map. Users of the previous RPG Maker versions may refer to it as the Caterpillar system, where each of the party members follow the main character, and other than being on the screen, they have no impact on the game. Knockout by slip damage and knockout by floor damage are tags that you should be careful enabling. These are sometimes frowned upon by some players and they should only be enabled when you make a conscious attempt to provide the player enough ways to remove status effects and healing. Slip damage refers to damage received through status effects like poison or other status effects that cause the player damage on the world map. Floor damage quite obviously refers to damage taken by damage floor tagged tiles. As an example, a person cannot simply walk on hot coals or glass without hurting their self. And in most RPGs, lava or fire tiles may kill someone if you walk on it for too long. Display TP in battle will allow you to show TP values. TP values are the values that certain abilities may make use of. If you need more details on TP values, please refer to the previous RPG Maker database video in this series. If you choose to not use TP values in your game, it is safe to uncheck this box to hide TP as you will have no use for it. Lastly, in the Options section, we have Experience for Reserve Members. This option allows you to essentially give all your playable characters experience, even the ones not in the immediate party. This will help you keep your player's characters all roughly the same level. 
Consider it like experience share in Pokemon games, giving experience to your entire group of Pokemon even if they didn't actively participate in combat. The next two sections I will cover together, and that is music and sounds. These two sections will greatly impact your game for better or for worse. Audio is important to games. Even something as simple as menu selection can make or break your game, particularly because your player will be hearing these sound effects nearly constantly. Both sections have default music and sound effect options, and so it is wise to double-click each one of these to verify the music or sound effect in use here sounds good to you. Of course, you can use music and sound effects that you import on your own. That is something that will be covered in a later video, however. For now, just make use of the defaults, or, if you're feeling brave, you can feel free to figure out how to import your own. One tip that I give to many people is to temporarily remove the title screen music. When you are playtesting your game, you will hear your music quite a lot, and sometimes hearing the first five seconds of your music may cause you PTSD any time you hear it upon release. Moving on, in many classic RPGs, there is a vehicle of sorts. These vehicles allow you to traverse terrain that you were not able to previously. In RPG Maker, you are provided with three options, boat, ship, and airship in order of importance. The Vehicle Images section will allow you to set the character set that you want to use for your vehicles. As with every other asset in the game, if you want your game to stand out from the rest, you will be making use of this to change your vehicles. The boat is used for shallow water, and the ship is used for traversing deep water. Shallow and deep water is determined by the tile set. As an example, the first tile in the tile set, as well as a few other tiles from the A1 images, are your shallow water, and the second tile is your deep water. Lastly, the airship can be used to allow players to travel all over the map, even over mountains. In the event that you choose to use the default frames, window color will allow you to set the color of the windows in game. The window refers to messages on screen in your windows in combat and in your menu. Menu commands correspond to the in game menu that you access through the map screen. By default, everything is checked, and in most cases, you probably will not uncheck these options, but the options to do so is there. This is particularly useful if you wish to force the player to use save points to save rather than their menu, but keep in mind you cannot make it appear through the event command either, so only uncheck this if you are absolutely sure you do not want the player to access these options through their menu. The side view attack motions section is really important if you create your own assets. Here, you will have access to change the motion that the player makes and the weapon's image. When you created your weapons in the previous video, this is what the weapons type referred to. By default, there is only one image per type. Typically, you are safe to leave each of these settings alone. However, if you change these types, you may also wish to change the image to match the type. I will discuss changing the type very shortly. Starting positions is not technically necessary to change through here, however in the event you forget which map has your start point, it may be useful in determining that without breaking your game. You may also change the boat, ship, and airship starting points as well. The last section of this tab is the title screen section. If you click on the image button, you will be presented with a dialog that allows you to set how you want your title screen to look like. Based on what assets you have imported in the game, you have numerous options for your background and overlay images, so take your time and pick images that look best to you. Below the images option, there is a draw game title option. You may use this if you wish, or you can uncheck it to make use of a logo image that you can set in the images dialog above this. The logo image can either be in the background image or the overlay image if you choose to do that instead of using draw game title. The type screen is often overlooked, but it is surprisingly simple to use and can be super beneficial to your game. The type screen is split between five sections. Elements, skill types, weapon types, armor types, and equipment types. Remember in the last tab where we were discussing weapon types? This is the screen where you can change, add, or remove weapon types. Let's say your character has a chainsaw weapon. If we click Change Maximum at the bottom and increase it to 13. For the sake of this example, 
This will give us a blank weapon type. When you select the blank type, you may type the name in at the text box below. Now let's hit apply. Now, if we go back to the system tab, if you look under SV attack motions, you will now see the new weapon type added to the list. Double click on that blank field and let's set our motion. Now, from my past experience, I know that the chainsaw animation is a thrusting animation. So in the motion field, let's select thrust. Now, if you click on the image drop down, we can select chainsaw as our image and then click OK. So we have a new weapon type set. Let's make a weapon that we can use the animation with. Let's hit apply here and then click on the weapons tab. On the weapons tab, let's increase our maximum to five. For the ease of this video, we will just right click on the sword and copy it. Let's now paste it on the fifth weapon ID. Now let's make the appropriate changes in the name, icon, and finally our weapon type. Clicking on the weapon type, we see chainsaw is available to select here. After we've made our adjustments here, let's click apply. We aren't done yet, however. Next up, we need to visit the classes tab. In the classes tab, with the first class selected on the left, let's look at our traits. And under traits, let's double click on an empty field. In the traits dialog, let's click on the equip tab. From here, we'll be clicking on the radio button for Equip Weapon. With that selected, click the drop down to the right and we'll select Chainsaw from the list. Finally, we'll click OK, then apply our changes at the bottom right. Now, let's test our Chainsaw Weapon. As long as you did not make changes to the first Heroes class, this should be ready to test. But if not, click on the Actors tab, and let's just make sure our first Heroes class is set to the first class in the Classes tab. Luckily, it'll say 0001 before the class name, so we'll be able to tell right away. Now let's go to the Troops tab. We'll select the first troop on the left, and then click Battle Test button. In the Battle Test window, let's change the weapon for our first hero to our new chainsaw weapon, and then click OK. Click OK on the battle test window, and let's see what our animation looks like. Alright, so our animation looks like it's working great. As you can see in this one example, one change we made in the type screen opens us up to many new options. Consider adding new elements, skill types, and armor types as well as to give yourself other cool options as well. One last thing I'd like to point out is if you make changes to your equipment types, this will directly impact what types of equipment your character can equip. If you wanted to get super in-depth with your equipment, you could essentially give your character the option to equip a shirt, pants, boots, belt, bracers, or even split up your accessories up into multiple categories like necklace, trinkets, and rings. Making changes here will also update the equipment screen in-game automatically for you. And we are now in the final stretch. Let's take a look at our Terms screen. Here, you will specify the language used in the game to pass information on to the player. You can modify all of the terms such as Level, MP, TP, EXP, the parameter names such as Agility and Luck. You can even change the wording for the commands such as Fight, Formation, Weapon, and so on. Another major thing to note is the messages. These refer to phrases you will see in the game, including different menu options. In some of these, it'll say something like percent one, and may even have a percent two and a percent three with it. What this is is a variable that the engine has already predetermined it will need to use here. For example, if we look at enemy gain, we can imagine that it would likely say something like bat gained two HP or something similar. Documentation on this is rather slim and I haven't been able to figure out a breakdown of what each variable represents and how they're specified within there. But with trial and error, you could in theory modify these entries to read however you want. Just like everything else though, remember to hit apply after you make your changes.
So yeah, that pretty much covers the database. In three long videos, we have taken a detailed look into each of these tabs, and in some cases, seen firsthand how each tab interacts with each other. In the next video, I will cover the basics of creating events. For now, I have some homework for you. Using what you've learned in this video, create your own weapon type, and a weapon that uses that weapon type. Equip the player character that you complete in previous homework with that weapon type. Also consider creating armor types too, and creating a full set of armor for your hero as well to go along with it. Be creative and send me an email with screenshots of your completed homework, or maybe consider sharing a link to a video showing off your creation in the comments below. With that said, thank you for watching this lesson. I worked hard to make this video and spent far longer than I should have writing and rewriting this. If you appreciate the work put in this video and it helped you, consider liking and sharing this video as well as considering subscribing to the channel. Additionally, if you would like to support the continued work on videos like this, consider backing me on Patreon. Backing me on Patreon gives you free access to select asset packs that I have for sale on my itch.io store that you can use in your own game as well as early access to these videos when they go live. Also, I stream art, game design, and play video games over on Twitch. Consider giving me a follow over there and coming by. I try to stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The links to the Patreon and Twitch channel are in the description below. I hope to see you in the next video when we discuss creating events. If you have any questions about what I covered today, please let me know down below. And if I need to, I can create a follow-up video to cover those questions if a simple comment won't help. Have a great day and stay salty, friends. Shh.